Hey everyone, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today with me, I have Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC. Mackenzie, how's it going? It's going fantastic. Thanks so much for having me on, Alex. Absolutely. So, so the short version is you have a channel. Let me make sure I can have it visible on the screen over here. But you have a channel, Side Game LLC, in which you cover effectively, you cover a bunch of things. But the thing that caught my attention, the thing that you do better than I've seen any other channel do it, you, you have a real focus for it, and also inspired the topic of the video today, is going to be organizing videos. Uh, organizing videos in the sense you're talking about, you grab a bunch of games, you go, go over them, and then you show people how to organize or reorganize, often this is the case, especially with these big box Kickstarters, how to reorganize their giant Kickstarter. So for example, you have this uh, Chronicles of Junagar video over here that I have Chronicles of Junagar, and I've managed to condense my copy down into, well, two boxes. And from what I understand, you have yours down to two boxes, but differently than mine. So... I plan on watching this later today to figure out exactly how you've done it differently than mine and which version I prefer, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, if you have Zombicide 2nd Edition, if you have Chronicles of if you have any big box, and you also do it with smaller side boxes as well, uh, basically anything you want in terms of seeing how games get organized after the fact if you prioritize shelf space over having all the inserts and you'll do anything you'll do you'll like chop up in inserts to like you'll take those plastic inserts and customize them to fit your little box. Yeah, you got it. The whole point is to fit everything into a small box, like you said, take up as least shelf space as possible. And mo all of our games in our side game library are sleeved, so we also have to make sure it accommodates that. Yes, I do. I do sleeve everything, so that that is a relevant point as well. But that's basically that's basically this, and that also inspired, like I said, that inspired the the topic of today's video, which is ten games, and I can't remember exact wording, but the effect talked, effective topic is something along the lines of ten games we'd play more often with a better insert. Absolutely. That's the plan. Get these games on the table, get them going and have some fun. Yeah. So it's for this list. What I did, I don't know what your criteria was. My criteria were effectively twofold with a third sort of caveat. Uh, to begin with, I, I looked at games on my shelf, on my, my collection that I think I, that when I look the games that when I look at that game, I want to play it. But I'm also faced with the hesitancy of do I want to deal with playing it? And then the second reason, the second aspect was after I hit that, do I think that a better insert would help with that problem? Because some of them, I, I just don't think a better insert would help. I think that is what it is. And then lastly and thirdly, and this was the kind of thing I don't really, I just think about it after, which is I decided to include games that I've already fixed that problem for. Meaning if I have a game on my shelf that I did have that problem with and it got better after I got a better insert, I decided to include that because if the point of this video is to talk about it or help others or who knows what then having some success stories actually helps in that sense same as you alex my, your number three point is basically my whole list i've organized everything in this collection so that it can get played as quickly as possible and is actually helpful for the setup and gameplay so almost everything on this list i have either created an insert or got a custom insert for because it's that necessary gotcha. so if i'm hearing you correctly um i have a homework assignment and you've already done your homework assignment <laughs> yeah well this makes sense if it but given your channel effectively but yeah so basically that's that's the uh that's, let's, go, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm going to start off with my number 10, which is going to be, let me go ahead and share my screen ahead here because I realize it's not shared. My number 10 is going to be Too Many Bones. Uh, too Many Bones, and the first two I have are the ones I fixed the problem with. But Too Many Bones is going to be by Chip Theory Games. This is a gigantic box at the best of times. If you want the most accessible version of it, you're going to get Too Many Bones Undertow, which actually feels like a manageable experience. And then after you're done falling in love with the game, you'll get everything for it and realize that it's not a manageable experience and you'll never ever play this game until so you have multiple options you could bag things you could box them you could figure out all these options and they, they will help to a degree but the trove chest the trove chest that comes from too many bones from chip three games directly really helps with that problem let me see if i can find a picture over here as i, as I talk but it's one that after i put everything into the trove chest and i have the trove chest the guilty secret of i had the trove chest for like three months before i actually finally compressed everything into it but when you get that trove chest you manage to the way they have it set up and the way everything fits into us into a box into i can't find any pictures of it over here but it really just gives you such a more accessible version of too many bones it gives you the, the same experience you want but now you have drawers that you can pull things in or out of that everything fits into its perfect spot now i will say it's still a lot to get to the table, but it is certainly much easier to get to the table with that giant trove chest that they gave you. 
Absolutely. So this barely missed my list, mainly because I honestly don't think the insert that it comes with is that bad. It's all about kind of stacking and condensing because they do come with the dice trays and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, the trove chest is fantastic. It's not only a showpiece, but also it, like you said, it really speeds things up by condensing like the tyrants together and giving you dividers for the chips and the cards. Oh, fantastic. Love this thing. Yeah. We actually have an organizing video of this on our channel. Oh, I'll check it out uh, without the trove chest, I assume. With the trophy chest. chest. So, Ooh, yep. so I do wonder what I've done wrong because I know I still have <laughs> questions about parts of that 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 compilation that I don't know if I did it correctly, but it fits. So good enough for me. That's me. They give you two sets of stickers for a reason. Oh, <laughs> and I haven't. I so guilty secret. I still haven't stickered anything. I still haven't done that. I wanted to be sure. That's I okay. wanted to wait till I was done, till I was searching before I went through that process. And so I'm just have all the stickers there, and I'm like, it's good enough for now. But in any case, that is going to be my number ten. What is your number ten? My number 10 is kind of a series of games. This is going to be Zombicide. I'm going to talk specifically about Zombicide Second Edition. Okay. So Zombicide is a game that really is is prime for playing quickly. The newest Second Edition also has made sure that the gameplay is very fast and that the enemy phase is very turned down where the cards only have a single type of zombie. So it's basically always your turn. But if you're having trouble setting up this gigantic zombie killing game, then it's just going to stop you from actually jumping into it. So the having an insert for this game, whether it be something small like a Plano box or just a organization solution in general, is super, super helpful because you can get the gameplay started that much quicker and it's going to just increase your experience tremendously. So that's my number 10 is Zombicide, second edition. It could be Black Plague. Any style I think needs a solid insert, especially to speed up that scenario setup. Yeah, so I don't know if you see my screen over here, but uh, this is a little bit of a tangent to the, to the side topic to our conversation is going to be 3D printed stuff, which is, I don't think your channel focuses on that your channel is focusing on the accessibility so basically whether mm -hmm. or not you have a 3d printer here's how you organize it but if you do have a 3d printer there's a whole different homework assignment you can do like looking at the screen over here i need to do that at some point because that is very very cool very accessible looking but that's a whole different conversation uh for myself zombicide narrowly missed my list i love zombicide i have black plague i have invader i have second edition uh, i mostly end up putting these in bags uh just to shove them all in bags i do condense them into one box uh, it's i guess it's possible it should be included in my list but i specifically so this is another caveat i specifically focus on the insert aspect not just the organizational aspect when compiling this list so i definitely have for sure chipped away at whatever they gave you in order to make it more accessible but i did so without an insert in my case just with bags and the like cool that's gonna be my number uh, your number 10 my number nine <laughs> my number nine is going to be the second game that i fixed the problem with which is going to be marvel champions now marvel champions is a game that again similar to too many bones that initial core box is fine it's cool you got you know issues whatsoever but as you start to get more and more content one, it won't fit in that box. And two is the more boxes you have, the harder it is to get played. Now, I don't have this fancy, ridiculous, over-the-top looking thing that you see on the screen over here. I don't have that at all. I kind of want it. We're going to have to go do some Googling after this video. But instead, I do have a set of inserts. Actually, I don't know if you can you probably can barely see them. If you look down there, right under my shoulder there, that's going to be my two chat boxes over there that hold absolutely everything in them that gives you just, uh, it, it's, you know, first of all, it's, you know, pretty to begin with, a well-designed box. I've talked about it in other videos, but it just has everything immediately accessible with its own little token trays. None of the stuff to try to figure out in terms of four different boxes, six different solutions, bagged cards, whatever it is. It holds all my cards, everything I need sleeved. And since getting it, Marvel Champions has been, just been that much easier to get to the table and play it. And that's ideal for these games, especially when you have deck construction as part of the game. Having things organized is super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Your number nine? My number nine is a trading in space game. This is Sidereal Confluence. Ah. So when you open up this game, it has resources of all types, a bunch of different cubes, and you got to make sure that everybody has access to these resources because they are going to be trading them. You also have all these different aliens with their different powers. You're going to be constantly grabbing, checking what people are doing, and this game is pretty overwhelming, as you can wait, see. Wait, you mean this, this, this is overwhelming? You sure about that? Uh, just a little okay. bit. Uh, so adding an insert to this, anything to decrease this barrier that it, it looks terrifying is very welcome. So the game itself is actually not that crazy. A lot of the information is just kind of giving you hints at what's going to come up in the future. But getting an organization system for the different resources, the different player cards, the different ships is extremely helpful. So that's my number nine, Sidereal Confluence. Cool. This is the first one, I think. Have you played Marvel Champions? 
I have played Marvel cool. Champions. It's actually one of my favorite games. Nice. So this is the first yeah. one then that I have not played. That one of us hasn't played from the wow. from the four so far. Okay. Five, four. I don't even know what I can. Do, I can't do numbers. This is number four. But anyways, uh, Sidereal Conference is one that I very much wanted. I've been it's not been on my list for a long time, but it plays best at higher player counts. I just haven't gotten around yeah. to getting it back uh, since uh, getting getting it, not getting it back, getting it since we first uh, saw covid hit or all of that but it's one that's definitely on my list i've heard nothing but good things about it and apparently if i have a bit of a mess organizing it i will uh, get an insert so and they just did a reprint of this yes. so there is a second edition with new art oh it looks great yeah that's the one if i get it i'll be getting that one yes for sure uh but yeah moving on to my number eight i think i'm pretty sure number eight is going to be kingdom rush well i have elemental uprising on my screen but rift in time is the same exact problem and kingdom rush is a game that i do own and i do love and is excellent and i got it and i played like eight or nine games in the first two weeks and then a few weeks later i pulled it out again and got another three or four games in and then i haven't pulled it out since because Every time I pull this out, it is a bit of a nightmare to deal with all the stuff. The The game length, the game depth doesn't... It, it Combined with the game setup and the accessibility issue, it's just too much of a barrier that I end up not playing this most of the time. And when I do play it, I play it in batches. Now, this one is half solved. What I mean by half solved is the Kickstarter version of this game, of, of Elemental Uprising specifically gave you a new game trace insert to hopefully make that process more streamlined. But for me, this is a game that without that, and I hope it's a good one because otherwise we'll be back to square one again, but without that accessibility, without that ability to plug and play, to grab a hero, grab some tiles, to get moving as fast as possible, this is a game that I really enjoy playing it, but I only pull it out when I know I'm going to knock out four or five games in a row because I have no interest in the setup and the teardown and the tokens and the heroes and the bosses and the tiles and everything just in a mess of where it goes because right now it is a mess of where it goes. Totally get you here. I think the biggest barrier here are the cards themselves because yep. you have to organize those decks of monsters. And that could be that could take forever because some are in different orders, some required specific numbers. Oh, it could be a nightmare. So I agree with you on this one. This is a great choice. Yeah, awesome. Your number eight, let's say. My number eight is going to be a very popular family game. This is Quacks of Quedlinburg. So when you open up this game, you should be getting started as soon as possible. Uh, very similar to the other games on this list, you want to get going. This is one where everybody's playing simultaneous, so there's no real downtime in this game outside of picking your different upgrades. But having a set organized that you can just pull out and you're ready to go, oh, it's amazing. And as you can see here, there are some great options. You can do a 3D print. You can just do a standard Plano box. You can do like a chess X organizer. Anything to help display things, to kind of give an accurate amount of information on what ingredients are left is going to be super helpful and start that game as soon as possible get into the action and have a blast so i really like quacks of Quillenberg, but man if you don't have a good insert it could be a bear to open up all of those different ingredients and put them in piles Ugh, sounds like a nightmare yeah, absolutely agreed again this is also on my short list this is one that i initially ignored it because i have an insert already and then when i was getting towards my list and realizing i should include those two at that point my list was mostly full and i picked others instead but i was definitely eyeing this one it's one that it's not the worst. I think part of the reason I didn't include it is, is compared to, let's say, a Zomicide, it's not the worst even without an insert. But you're right. The, the gap, the difference between pre-insert, post-insert, or pre-solution, post-solution is so large in terms of how easy it is to pull this out. And especially if you have the expansion, she has more confidence as well. Excellent. Excellent choice. My number seven is going to be Cthulhu Death May Die. Now, I debated including this one on my list because... I do pull it out a lot and I, I still play it a lot. And, and I was like, well, I play it a lot. So I don't necessarily look at it and think to myself that I'm, well, I need an insert. It needs a solution or whatnot. But the truth is I, I pull it out a lot and I play it a lot, not because it doesn't need a storage solution, but because of how much I like it. This game is a mess. And I put up with that. I put up with the problems with the flaws in it because I just like it that much. I want to play it that much. But at the end of the day, it's still one that, if it had a good insert, if it had ways of dealing with the tiles, of ways of having the monsters, like like any of these games we talk about, I've condensed it down to two boxes, everything's stored perfectly, bags, whatever it is, but I, I still think it needs something better than what I currently have to make it a game that I'm pulling it out, I'm pulling it out a lot, I want to pull it out more. Another great choice. I really like that they come in little scenario boxes, yes. so that's helpful for the organization, but you're totally right on the tiles being the thing that slows it down. Very similar to Zombicide, having to go through and find specific tiles, that can just be really, Absolute really annoying. Pains. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Your number, great. Your number seven. I lose track of My number all the time. seven is a game called Dawn of the Zeds. So Dawn of the Zeds is a tower defense style game where you're protecting the city and all these zombies are coming in. And you definitely need a good organizer for this because it comes with 
hundreds of little tokens that are really only used for one or two things during the game. Little reminder tokens like a, a you know a tank, a, a hero, a condition. There's just so many things going on. Look at this picture here. You're going to see there's like 20 different tokens of all different types right there. So you need definitely, the game comes with a great organizer for the cards, but you need something for those tokens. Otherwise, you're going to spend half that game just looking for specific items. So a Chessex organizer for this is super nice. Uh, just something to group things so they're easy to pick out. Super useful. It really needs an insert, though, because otherwise it's going to be unbearable. That's my number seven, Dawn of the Zeds. Now, unrelated to the insert, how is this game? It's pretty good. So I was quite surprised. It's one that I do prefer playing solo yep, because you can control everything. But the cooperative mode is actually pretty great. I do enjoy this cooperative as well. Yes, the reason I um, ask is I do have this game on my shelf. I have not played it. I, I need to get it played along with way too many other games. But uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently I'll need an insert and to play it when I get a chance. Excellent. It's a little intimidating, this one, because it does have multiple rule books, but they're there in order to ease you into the difficulty. It's got like a bunch of mini expansions in it, essentially, with the difficulty levels. So, But it's one I'd recommend. It's pretty awesome. Cool. My number six. My number six is going to be Super Fantasy Brawl. Super Fantasy Brawl, a game, one of the few games that comes with game trays that is useless. And actually, this is a great picture right here. This is the current box when you remove the game trays. The game trays are, are basically useless in this game. And game trays, if you're watching this, I love you. You're awesome. You've added so much value to my life. This time, I don't know if it's you or Mythic, but someone messed up. But this game is one that, the, the like I said, the, look at the box. The game trays are useless. They add too much space. They add too much clutter. They don't make it more accessible. Dumping into the box like this is more accessible. And it's one that is... It is such a streamlined experience. When I play this game, it's literally it's half an hour. It's a half hour long game. You set up the board, you get everything going, done, quick, simple. Uh, and, and the box is so annoying. I need a new insert. I don't have one. I need to get, I need to go 3D print or buy or do something where I can just pull out what I need, get the tokens from the slots, pull the heroes. You know that, that, that picture we were looking at with the Zombicide miniatures? I need something yeah. like that for this. There's not a lot of components. The box is just so, so bad compared to where this game needs to be that uh, this is very much on my homework list of games to solve. So this one, I agree with you. The inserts are not the best. Like you said, there's a lot of negative empty space there. It's kind of funny to see a tiny little miniature surrounded by like a foot of plastic. Yeah. Uh, I think you're totally right. I would have used. <laughs> you're totally right, though. The speed of this game is it's one of its greatest strengths is that it's a skirmish game that's up and at them really quickly. But they are introducing a new insert for all of the miniatures in an upcoming um I think it's a game found update or a Kickstarter update, something like that. They're going to be introducing a new solution. Cool. And it's so, supposed to be for people that are new to the game and people who have the big box. I remember so doing you, the Kickstarter. They said something along those lines that it might be coming, but I hadn't heard anything since. And so it's definitely on this list, but absolutely I'll be paying attention to whatever they do at least because, well, I want to play this game more. You're number six. Great choice. My number six is going to be a cooperative game of Kitchen Mayhem. This is Kitchen Rush. So Kitchen Rush is a game where you're going to be, it's real time, so you need to be frantic, and you're going to be constantly grabbing ingredients. And my gosh, this game has so many ingredients. So if you have clutter or if you have issues with picking these ingredients out during the game, as you can see here, somebody's already taken the chance to get an insert for this. But if you're having trouble finding what you need during the game, it's going to put you at a significant disadvantage. And once again, the barrier to entry of just having to put all this stuff out, and if you kept these in bags, I, I probably would never touch this. It wouldn't be one I ever take out because it wouldn't be worth the hassle uh, during the game or before it. So I think that the organizers here are a super big gift to it. you got to make sure that you have something that's going to make you want to actually open up this game as opposed to something else. Cool. That's going to be a little less stressful. Solid choice. I have played this one. It's been a long time since I played it. I don't currently own it. Uh, Real-time games are a tough one for me. Uh, some of them I keep, very few. Most of them tend to go away eventually although i have played unrelated there's a there's a ps4 game version of this kitchen something or whatever kitchen i don't know what it's called but there's a there's a cooking game that's along the lo same lines of the video game that i really like overcooked 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 that's what that's it is it. Yep. yeah i really like that one that's why actually why i got kitchen rush in the first place hoping it would give me a board game version of it but yeah real-time games for sure anything to do with real-time games is going to be that much more important because effectively you can't just have it wherever you have it you have to have everything pre-set up ready to go before you be in the game or you're going to have issues you can't just figure it out as you play you have to be prepped to go from the beginning cool my number five is going to be arena the contest 
Arena of the Contest is a game that I do love a lot, and there's a lot of boxes. And if you back Tenaris Adventures, there's going to be even more boxes. And the sheer amount of content for this game is going to be overwhelming. I mean, this over here is just going to be the base set alone. This is nothing to do with all the expansions. This is literally just the base set, and the expansions add so much more content to the game. Boxes full of heroes, boxes full of tiles, boxes full of walls, boxes full of everything, all with their pretty storage solutions that are great for making it survive transit and look pretty, but not great for when you want to pull out this game and want to have all the heroes available and have everything available and play the game. And so it's one that I very much want a storage solution for at some point. Uh, right now, it's still in most of the original boxes. I'm waiting until I get Tenaris before I condense everything into less plastic bags for lack of something better. But it, it's one that I, I, I like playing it. And it's, it's something that's uh -oh. hard to pull out. <laughs> Alex, you're stressing me out. We have the big one coming for our librarian. Uh, I thought it, that it did already come with something nice, so this is kind of terrifying. It's going to yeah. be like Chronicles of Dragonor all over again. It comes with nice Ooh. stuff, but it comes with nice stuff the same way Chronicles of Dragonor did. Nice in terms of beautiful inserts that are, are great for people who want everything well-preserved. It's not great for people like you and I who just want to condense it all. So it's nice is there. They're, they're, nice is fine, just not condensed. Oh, man. Not looking forward to organizing that one. Holy cow. <laughs> Anyways, it's a new video for you, so that'll be fun. It's a popular game, so you could do well. There you go. I'll watch Perfect. yours, and then I'll figure out mine from there. <laughs> you can make some judgments then, yeah? <laughs> so my number five is going to follow a similar vein as your Marvel Champions pick. And all the LCGs really could be in this, like Arkham yeah. or Marvel, but I'm choosing specifically Aeon's End. Okay. So Aeon's End, the box that Aeon's End comes in is literally just a big empty box so it's you don't really have much way of organizing with it and it comes with so much content it comes with card after card after card for monsters minions bosses each boss has its own set of tokens every mage has their own special powers you have cards of varying sizes you have the player boards the monster boards it's kind of a nightmare honestly so if you don't have a good organizer for this it's going to really stop you from setting up this deck building game so once again it's a deck building game so you're yeah. going to make sure that those cards are organized well because otherwise there's just more accessible games that do this that have organizers built in what's to stop you from picking up dominion or the other lcgs that come with an, at least a at least semblance at least of an organizer yeah. in them. and to be clear for those seeing the screen this is not what the traditional ANZA looks like this is somebody who took the time to make a foam core insert for their game uh if you have all the expansions or whatever number of content you have it's going to make the problem worse I, if i recall correctly it's been a while since i pl pulled out the original base game if i recall correctly it just has a plain little white divider nothing else in there not really spots for anything it's just kind of like here put some cards in here and then there's space on the top for you to do whatever else you want uh but yeah this is i completely agree solid solid choice in terms of any any of these card games like you said cool my number four is going to be chronicles of Drunagar, which we kind of talked about already now chronicles of Drunagar, even though i've condensed everything i'm still not happy with where it is right now it's a game that, I don't know, I'm clicking this picture. This picture is cool, but it's not related to what we're talking about. But Chronicles of Junagar is a game that it, it I, have got, I have it condensed down to two boxes that will already improve my ability to jump in, to grab a hero, to do what I need to do, to just, to just play the game as fast as possible. But I want something that makes the actual game part of it more accessible. The fact that I, I need a better token trays. I need better to tra trays for storing those map tiles. So when I open up a new door, open up a new room, I don't have to go figuring out through every single thing. I can find a slot where they are. I can figure out what I need to do. I need better, better options for grabbing the, the the tokens the cards the monsters the the miniatures right now i have it at a point where the initial accessibility it, because it's down to those two boxes much much easier very happy the gameplay accessibility is still leaves a lot to be desired i would love to have a proper insert for this and not just a condensing solution that was my biggest criticism with the game was when you open a door, the game halts. Yes. Lots of games fall into this problem. Mansions of Madness, yep. um, Imperial Assault, lots of games have that kind of like halt, stop yep. uh, thing. And good organizer will solve that problem. Yeah. Which and, I think and, is and I love that mechanic. I mean, it's a complaint because I love the mechanic that you don't know what's happening, that you, you open a door and you figure out what's happening. That's excellent. I don't want that to be taken away, but it comes at a cost. And, as, and, an, and a good organizer, like I said, will, will help reduce that cost. Yep, you got it. Cool. So my number four is going to be Batman Gotham City Chronicles. So Batman comes in four giant boxes, full and full of content. And season two has introduced more and more of that content in these little hero packs. And this is a, I think was a terrible decision on their part. It comes in a tiny little two by one box that's just going to hold a single miniature. Yeah. And now you've got all these little boxes that you 
don't really know what to do with because you do want to incorporate them with everything else, but you want to make sure they're protected. It's it's a nightmare, honestly. So storing this and making sure it's accessible before the game and after the game and during the game and during versus mode when you're selecting your characters, you need a solid insert for this, a way to organize it, a way to get rid of that huge gap that's going to be stopping you from setting it up because it is a big game. It does have a big barrier with the rules already and the pieces and the way they're organized is breaking that down is half the battle honestly yeah whenever any game gives you those tiny little boxes uh, and sometimes it's because it's a stretch goal and at least i understand there but the more small boxes games give you i'm sure there are collectors out there who keep every single one of them but if for accessibility purposes for most people who play games that's just going to be tossed somewhere else uh, actually one of the things i actually very much appreciate the command has started doing in recent years with their stretch goals is they have the stretch goal in their tiny box for those who got it but then the stretch goal insert comes with a little spot for that little miniature. So I sometimes don't keep the inserts either way, so it doesn't necessarily help me. But for those that do keep the insert, at least it's a recognition that that little small thing you gave me, useless. Waste of time, waste of space. Let's figure out how to move on from that. Cool. So Bathroom Gods 3. This one is the one that I haven't played, by the way. It's one that I got and then I heard too many things about it that made me less inclined to force my way through that rulebook. Anyways. My number three is going to be Etherfields. Now, this is actually going to be a placeholder for Etherfields, for Tainted Grail, for ISIS Vanguard, for that matter, although ISIS Vanguard isn't here yet, so I don't know what their insert solution may or may not be when it actually shows up. But Etherfields is a game that the biggest problem with it is the fact that these games are meant to be Etherfields, ISIS Vanguard, Tainted Grail. They're meant to be continuously played. They're meant to be these campaign experiences that you go into and you, you save your game, you come back to. And as much as I love Awaken Realms, as much as I love their games, I feel their games have never really been designed with the aspect of, hey, here's an efficient way to save your game, an efficient way to move forward, an efficient way to store where your progress, to remember what you were. Because for me, unless I take notes on this game or I'm playing it nonstop, I will completely forget what was going on when I show up next. Uh, it's a game that does not in any way give you, either feel specifically, it does not give you a single way to actually store anything you're doing. It's just like, here's a giant box full of cards that don't really fit sleeve cards, by the way. And also, you know, kind of if you have all this stretch goals, expansion, everything else, you're just going to have to keep them in separate boxes. It, it really, I love this game. I think it's a ton of fun. I want these games to come with an insert that is designed to be accessible, to continuously play it, to jump back in, to save, oh yeah, here are the cards you're in the middle of. Here are the cards you've done this with. Here's the cards you've done that with, as opposed to Either fields in particular, they give you dividers that don't even have labels. You just kind of have to guess what they're for. So, it, great game needs an insert. Interesting. This is the one I do disagree with you, <sighs> actually. So, it, the way that we have it organized, sure. uh, we got the sleeve box as well. Okay. And that sleeve box is incredible for organizational purposes. It comes with these nice large trays. Sure. There's large dividers for each you know, thing you're doing, you can easily sort them. I had, a, I thought this was a really solid insert for that. A, everything is kept in a line. It reminds me of Seventh Continent a little bit, where you have that like filing cabinet system. Except it's really easy to just pick out and find that section that you so need. So the difference so I we have this one... might just be I didn't get the sleeve box. That's it. Oh because man, because I the never sleeve get box sleeve. Box. I always use uh, sleeve kings instead. I never buy the pre-made sleeves, whatever it is for the game. Gotcha. So I've never actually seen the sleeve box. It sounds like you're saying it's more than just sleeves. It's an actual. It's so nice. It's just the best way to set it up. Honestly, you pop up in the top, and it comes already pre-divided, and everything is there. It's it makes the game so Interesting. nice. It's exactly what you're describing. It's a way to pick up what you've left off. They've got specific desires dividers so that you can set. Does this up mean I have to start buying era? sleeves on every Awakening Realms? game i ever see again i think that it's the way to go it's really nice when you get a game in and it already has all the stuff for it, all the sleeves it's, it's something that you don't have to worry about it it's because so if it's nice giving you more than just sleeves it changes the the value composition for me i never got their sleeves because i'd rather just get cheap sleeves especially for a story game where i'm kind of going to go through it once and move on i'm not paying for over for premium sleeves but if it has, oh, this changed the conversation. I'm... So this is only, I only saw this in Etherfields. It didn't have something similar in Tainted, Tainted Grails. So Tainted Grails. Yeah, it was earlier. I think so it just. Maybe it's new. Maybe it's yeah. a new thing they're doing. Maybe. Hopefully they do it with ISS Vanguard too. Cool. Anyway, so that aside apparently. So what's your number three? So my number three is going to be Alter Quest. So Alter Quest is a game where you're dungeon delving. Um, they make it so that it's really easy to set up where you're just putting a map on the table. But during the game, you're going to need an insert for all sorts of things. So right off the bat, you're going to need an insert for your character. Each character has its own deck. Yep. So you want to make sure that you have easy stuff to pull out so that you can get the decks. Um, the scenario itself also requires specific decks of cards. It uses a modular deck system. So you're going to want to make sure that you have those separated so you can pick the specific things if you're playing the story mode, etc. And then during the game, 
specific cards are going to tell you to find different terrain and equipment, altars, like you can see on this picture, a treasure chest and some fungus. You're going to have to go and look for those specific things. So if you don't have an organizer for this, just like we talked in Chronicles of Draenagor, you're going to halt the game and stop it. So you want to make sure you have something that's going to sort the tokens, the miniatures, and the cards. So it's that perfect trifecta of, dang, you better be ready for this game. Yeah, I completely agree. I have this one. Uh, I have this one already. I have not played it, but I already am not thrilled with the way things are set up. I just don't go through that extra step until I actually played it and have a better feel for what way I want to organize it and or get inserts. But yeah, this is not this is not a pretty one to deal with all the tokens and and everything in the game. Cool, great choice. My number two is going to be Black Rose Wars. Black Rose Wars is by Ludus Magna Studio, and this is one that I did debate adding to the list specifically because. The way the game is structured, you're going to have this, you're going to have basically a giant map tiles full of different things that you're basically trying to dive into this world over here that you see in front of you with miniatures, with tons of cards, more cards than you can possibly dream of if you have all the content for this game, which I absolutely do. It, 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 just, it can be absolutely overwhelming in terms of how much content you have. Now, the way the game actually works you can actually jump into it fairly quickly. That's not the biggest deal because when you have your primary miniatures, you're going to have your core, your core heroes or mages or whatnot, and all those other gray miniatures of which they're the most of, you can kind of pull out or deal with as the game progresses, as you cast them, so to speak, as these incantations or whatever they're, the ev uh, evocations or whatnot. So some of the main aspects of the game you can kind of condense to get to a quick startup point. The reason I did decide to include it in the end is because the amount of cards there are combined with these things still make it a beast to not only set up the first time, but then to continuously play and mix things around there's just a lot of content here and even if you condense it down you still have to figure out okay great what am i pulling out what's my starter package to get this game moving and what do i need to be able to have accessible as i go uh, a good insert could make that process incredibly streamlined uh, it's just because of the nature of that two it's kind of two stage approach to it starting and then as you go are two different ways to handle this game a good insert could do uh, could be a lifesaver here Totally agree with you here. I have not played this one. It's the one on your list I haven't touched yet. Well, I have one more I that you totally also haven't played. I know, that, I know you haven't played my oh. one. Absolutely another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're number two. All right. So my number two, this is one that I actually broke down and got the broken token insert for. This is going to be Caverna. So Caverna is this big sprawling Euro game, a continuation of a group cola where you're going to play as a family of dwarfs and this game has resources on it like so many different types of resources so having a trade that you can just pull out really easily super nice you can see in this picture here bags on bags on bags yeah. you've got tiles for specific individual rooms so each of the rooms are separated by a type but each of those rooms is unique they're all individual tiles so having to pick them out putting them yeah. oh it was a nightmare this game was not getting played at all when it didn't have an insert. This game just was unbearable to get up to the table. The process of undoing everything, sorting all the components and making sure the tiles all worked as well. It was a nightmare. But once you have the organizer here, the gameplay is nice, smooth and easy. And it became a game that we pulled out a lot and have really enjoyed. So Caverna, my number two. Yeah, solid choice. I have it as well with the broken token insert as well. Uh, I very much debated adding this one again when I was going to that point where reevaluating. Oh, well, if I'm including things I have inserts for, I was like, I'm going to put this in. And the reason I didn't, I was like, well, then I have to put in like every Uwe Rosenberg game like this. Like they all have this issue. I can't just pick one of them. Uh, I probably should have put Uwe Rosenberg as an entire category. <laughs> <laughs> that would have and that's what caverna kind of takes over it is yeah Uwe Rosenberg's games. Fields of Arl could have been yeah. in here, but games like uh, Feast for Odin have actually approached this problem and said, hey, we'll include some trades for oh, you. Oh, which I did have trades. They're, they're pretty decent. They're not the worst. I, I did forget about that. But also, I do agree in general, Caverna, I think, is the worst of his games when it comes to this problem. <laughs> all of them have it. Uh, you know, I have Love. I used to have Agricola. I used to have El Loyang. They all just chock full of resources. But chock full of resources means that there's, there's a problem on the other side of it. Great choice. Great choice. My number one. And I debated including my number one, but I felt I had to. My number one is going to be Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. Uh, and that's how I know you haven't played it because it oh! hasn't shown up yet. So, oh man, another nightmare. Oh. This is one that's coming in. Now I know. Oh gosh. Yeah, All right. This has, I'll be ready for this it. This has a lot of content. It has multiple boxes. It has that aspect. It's not even going to be a lot. I mean, here's no, these are the small secret boxes you can't really see there. These are just tiny. They're not really the box you have to worry about. But there's a ton of content for this game. There's a ton of tiles for this game. There's a ton of miniatures for this game. There's a ton of everything you're seeing here is prototypes, so ignore this. But there's, a, there's, there's miniatures, there's cards, there's content, there's secret packages to make the problem even worse because you can't even deal with the secret packages until you go through it properly. So it's a whole nother level to the problem. But the size of the box, the size of the box is massive. In fact, you can see it above my head over there, all the way up there. 
finger the ear, sort of. So I have all those boxes up there. I have the tower. I have everything for it. I am certain, not even a question, that I can get all of that into the core box. The inserts take up a lot of space. The box is heavy. There's a lot of things, but it can be more accessible. The problem is the sheer size of the box means that how do you even store things in a way that is easy to access that takes away from the the unnecessary plastic inserts they have good inserts same th problem as you talked about with the chronicles of Jinnagur, same problem as you talked about with the mean of the contest good functional inserts for those people who want to store their miniatures not as functional for those who are trying to be mindful of space and compressing things into as few boxes as possible uh it, it looks like a cool game i haven't played it it's the only game on this list that i actually included that i have not played it looks amazing looks incredible very excited to play it also would love to have an insert Fantastic. So my number one is another game that I had to get an insert for right off the bat. I prepared it before it even arrived, and this is Gloomhaven. So I don't know how this could not be on this list. When you open up Gloomhaven, it is just stacks and stacks and stacks of cardboard in this gigantic box, and all this cardboard is just token after token after token, map tiles, tokens, uh, creatures, everything, and there's no storage for it at all. You open this up and it's kind of like, wait a second, what have I done? You need to make sure that when you open this thing, you are prepared to organize it because it can be a nightmare if you don't. Uh, this game is, it's one of those games that we just described where you have to make sure you get the correct tiles. You want to make sure you're doing that. You're looking for specific monsters and you're doing all of this setup at the beginning of the game. So you want to make sure that that organization system is working super well. That way you can get the gameplay started because if you don't have an insert, this game can take about 45 minutes to set up. But with with a good insert you can reduce it drastically to like maybe 10 minutes which is still a lot but man 35 minute difference that's crazy that's insane yeah so the only reason it's not on my list and i completely agree with you solid choice any point anyone who wants to play gloomhaven i would say for the person who's going to play gloomhaven in this giant box get an insert it will make the process easier the reason i didn't include it on my list is because of twofold basically first of all gloomhaven jaws of the lion uh, that does give you the Gloomhaven experience without having the giant box. And even faster than Gloomhaven with an insert, Jaws of Lion is still faster and more streamlined in that sense. And I don't have... Remember my initial my initial uh, list was, do I look at the game, want to play it, and choose not to play it, and think that an insert would solve that problem? And the answer for me right now is no, because I'm not touching Gloomhaven with a 10-foot pole until I finish Jaws of the Lion. And I have it, by the way. I have it somewhere else behind me. I don't know. You can't... But yeah, so that was, it, it didn't make my list because of that aspect. I think that even with the insert, and I have a broken token insert for it, or some insert, I don't know what I have, but even with that, it's still such a barrier to get to that I refuse to touch this again until I go through Jaws of the Lion, but it is a fantastic choice. It, it really is one of the few games that I would say do not get it unless you are prepared to pay for the insert as well. Cool. That is our top 10 games on both sides of games that we need inserts for i can't remember the title of this video games that we need inserts for to make them more accessible or something along those lines <laughs> yeah uh for basically first of all well, mackenzie first of all thanks for coming so much this was a great list uh great list we had no overlap did we not at wow, all that's impressive yeah. wow that's interesting because we mostly agree with each other's choices wow yeah I, this is a <laughs> this is a big list if we're being honest board game companies keep this in mind yeah i, I, I don't what is the solution here because I don't know how you solve this. I don't think that I don't think that the way a game is meant to be consumed is necessarily right for all people. Because for every person who watches your video about how to and reminder to those, I'll throw a link down below to go to his channel to check out his organizing videos if you're that kind of person. But for every person who is that kind of person, for every person who will bag up their miniatures or cut a tray in half to make it fit, to make a game, to prioritize accessibility above all else, there's going to be multiple people who shake their heads who are like, No, how how could you? So I don't, I don't know if there's a good solution. When you have Chronicles of Jonagar and Arena of the Contest and uh, Assassin's Creed all giving you good, solid inserts that many people will be very happy with, and then there's you and me who are not. I don't know what the solution is. I think probably the best approach is something that is not only accessible but also functional. So I, I think that's that's the biggest, right? Like Game Trays is making great steps Game in this direction. Is solid. I, th I think they are making the probably the best steps in this direction to making sure that their product is not only functional, but also helpful. So I think that's that's huge. So that would be probably where this is going to yeah, be going. I think it's just a fantastic job with games that are more in the singular box Euro genre. I don't know if I've seen game trays tackle a Gloomhaven, tackle a come on all in pledge. I, I think it's a different problem. I am fascinated I think to see them approach it. 
I think Dwellings of Eldervale is the best example yeah. of what game trays can do to speed up setup and protection. I think that is probably the best organization insert. So that it done. is absolutely the closest, but the distinction between Dwellings of Eldervale and other big box games in the genre is going to be Dwellings, regardless of what pledge level you got gave you the same box. And in fact, there are people who bought the Soala pledge level who think that there's extra unused space in the box because there, there is, how do you account for a solution? I Meaning there is, I don't know if you know this, if you, if you got, I didn't know if, that. That's wild. They just have all those empty spaces have, for the bases. And I stuff? believe they oh have empty God. spaces in the box or I don't know exactly how it's handled, but I, I recall seeing complaints. I'm not a hundred certain. It could be I'm wrong. Call me out in the comments below if I'm wrong. <laughs> I recall seeing complaints from people who got like only eight of the monsters and not the bases and they have extra space in the box. So when you're designing a solution around something like that, they did a great job with dwellings. Agreed. How do you do that around one of these, you know, how, which expansion are you going to get? You bought Marvel United. Awesome. You have the core box. You have which expansions. How do you plan around that? You and I just figure it out after the fact, after we have everything. I don't know what you do. I mean, that's what broken token inserts are for. <laughs> They're there to provide that aftermarket solution. But yeah, it's an interesting. It's an interesting discussion. A uh, whole, whole video unto itself. Yeah. Anyways, Mackenzie, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. This has been a blast having you on here. To everyone else, I'll throw a link down below. Feel, feel free to check out his channel for organizing solutions or and or other videos as well. And as always, have a good one.